Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. Uh, today, going to talk a little bit about pediatric respiratory problems and some things that you can look for uh, when you look at your pediatric patient, especially when you're thinking about either respiratory distress versus respiratory failure. Now, of course, this quick Monday Minutes isn't going to be able to cover everything that you might think in this type of a patient presentation. But it's just important don't rem to, to remember to assess your pediatric patient, guys, and then, of course, reassess and monitor them, right? Because we all know about pediatrics and how they can change from moment to moment. Now, you want to look at airway patency when it comes to your pediatric patient and you're trying to determine what's going on. Is it open? Is it maintainable? Or is it not open or not maintainable? And what about the respiratory effort? Well, you're looking at it, you know, whether it's upper respiratory um, or a, a lower airway or upper airway, the respiratory effort, effort is going to be showing as being increased. And what about the upper versus lower? Well, upper, you're going to listen to breath sounds like a strider, maybe a barking cough, or even hoarseness, whereas the lower airways, you're going to be hearing things like wheezing, and you're going to have that prolonged expiratory phase going on as well. Now, what about air movement? Normally, guys, when you're talking about pediatrics, because of that prolonged phase and the air getting trapped, you're going to be have a decreased amount of air movement with these types of patients. And what about the heart rate? Well, you're going to see tachycardia where it'll be faster than normal, and that's usually in the early stages of the patient having respiratory problems. And when you have that slower uh, heart rate going on, the bradycardic, the bradycardia heart rate, that is when you're going to be having uh, more of a late stages of the patient's respiratory uh, problems. And the skin. Well, early on, you're only going to be pale. Uh, that pallor look to it, cool uh, sort of skin, right? Later on, you're going to have the patients that are going to be more cyanotic in their appearance. And what about the mental status? Well, early on, just like adults, anxiety, agitation going on, right? Um, and again, that's an early sign. Later on, your patients are going to become more lethargic or even unresponsive. Now, Let's just quickly go over distress versus failure when it comes to the signs and what, what I've mentioned, right? Because this is going to help you determine that. So you talk about the airway, right? Is it open and maintainable versus not maintainable or unmanageable, right? The uh, respiratory rate, is it tachypnic or is it, you, is it bradyo or even apnea going on? What about the work of breathing? You have do you have an increased effort uh, effort with that when you talk about the stress, or is it a decreased effort or even apnea when you've got uh, a failure going on? Okay, nasal flaring, retractions. Think about the work of breathing. And what about air movement? Is it good air movement, or do you have poor air movement, or even absent air movement? And then the heart rate, is it fast, tachycardic, or is it slow, bradycardic? This is between distress and failure, guys, right? Right here, your, the, the reddish side is more the patients that are going to be in distress, and the failure is going to be over here on the blue side, right? So the heart rate, is it tachycardic or is it uh, bradycardic? And the skin. Do you have that pallor that I mentioned where the, the, pale, the skin is pale or maybe cool, or do you have cyanosis? And finally, the mental status, okay? Keep an eye on the mental status, guys. Is the patient agitated? Do, are they anxious? Or are they lethargic or worse? Are they unresponsive? Now, listen, guys, there's a lot to think about when you talk about pediatric patients. Again, can't get into it all today. But one thing I just want to mention, this is something I'm sure you've heard a bunch of times already. In infants and children, respiratory distress can quickly go to respiratory failure and, of course, cardiac arrest. Your good outcomes, depending upon the patient, meaning you got a patient who ends up having a neurologically you know, intact survival, um, you know, getting discharged from the hospital, is a lot more likely to happen following um, 
uh, respiratory arrest than following a cardiac arrest, okay? So once that child, that infant gets into cardiac arrest, guys, the outcome is usually very poor. So remember, you can really help that outcome by doing what I mentioned early on, right? Assess the patient and reassess. Your early identification and management of respiratory distress and respiratory failure before the patient gets into cardiac arrest is gonna can mean the difference to a, a, a negative or a positive outcome in the end for the patient. So follow your local protocols, guys. Look at uh, what your guidelines are when it comes to a patient in distress and failure, uh, depending upon upper airway or lower airway, and treat them accordingly, guys. And always keep reassessing that patient and make sure you're not missing anything and overlooking something that might be going on with the patient, especially when we talk about uh, uh, respiratory rates and, and uh, mental status and, and heart rates, right? Keep reevaluating, guys. All right, listen, that's it for today's Monday Minute. I know we can't get too much into every individual lung sound uh, presentation versus distress and failure. This is really meant to give you an overall idea on what to look at. But if you want to get into some more pediatric um, assessment ideas, you can check out the webinar that we did on pediatric assessment essentials. You can click this little uh, button down here for the getting more details on this, okay? But this webinar that we did really covered some key elements of uh, pediatric assessment, okay? And on top of just injury prevention and the role that we play in the patient, we talked about things like head-to-toe assessing um, and, and uh, key components to your initial assessment, okay? Getting that general impression, why the, the proper history is important and why it's unique to the pediatric patient. Discover, you know, talk about age-appropriate communication methods, things like we mentioned here, assessing the vital signs, even pain recognition, and performing procedures that we have to do, like intravenous intubation on pediatric patients. Um, go check it out, guys. Get all the details on this webinar at the link below, okay? Just click there, and you'll get sent over to that. So I hope you can use these Monday Minutes, guys. Um, if you have some minutes of your own, be sure to send them over to me. My email is jhoff, H-O-F, at emssco.com. Uh, be sure to comment below and on here on YouTube and over on the blog at emsofficehours.com. I'd love to hear what you have to say and maybe get some Monday minutes here on a topic that you are interested in. All right, guys, that's it for, for today. As always, Jim Hoffman, stay safe. <music>